Steve Nichol, Jane Eugene, and Carl McIntosh came together in London, England to form the British soul band Loose Ends in 1980. The group was founded by Steve after he left the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. He would meet Jane at a party, and together they decided to create a band that at one point had nearly a dozen members in it. Throughout the process, they also looked for a bass player. They tried out numerous musicians, but none of them quite felt like the missing piece of the puzzle that they were looking for, until they met Carl McIntosh. It was a no-brainer that he was the one. They signed their first record deal with Virgin Records the next year under the name Loose End, no S. The name came from a hair salon that Steve and Jane just happened to pass by one day while walking down the street. The following year, they debuted on the scene with their first single, In the Sky. It didn't chart, nor did the couple of singles that came after. Then came a name change, but a very subtle one. The band went from Loose End without an S to Loose Ends with an S in 1983. The reason for the change was a typical one. Record producer Pete Waterman had a production company called Loose End Productions. Some may also recognize his name as part of the English songwriting and record producing trio Stock, Aiken, and Waterman. Naturally, Pete didn't like the fact that a music group was calling themselves the same name as his company, so he tried to bring the long arm of the law down on them. The addition of an extra letter ended up solving the problem quite nicely. Loose Ends would be off and running and finally get some love on the charts with the release of their next several singles, Tell Me What You Want, Emergency Dial 999, and Choose Me, Rescue Me. All three came off their debut album titled A Little Spice, which dropped in May 1984. The next year, their seventh single would indeed be very lucky for the group. Hanging on a string, contemplating, included on the US version of their debut album, as well as their follow-up, So Where Are You, released in the summer of 1985, would go on to become their biggest hit ever. It reached number 13 on the UK chart and captured the number one spot on the US Billboard R&B chart. This tremendous accomplishment made Loose Ends the first black British band ever to top that chart. 80s music lovers will hear the obvious similarity in the bass line of Hanging on a String with the 1984 song No One's Gonna Love You by American funk group The SOS Band. Even though there wasn't a legal case for copyright infringement, the use of that Roland 808 machine caused major friction between Loose Ends and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, the mega successful songwriting and record production duo who wrote the SOS Band song and produced the album it's featured on. Carl insists that there wasn't any malice intended when the group chose to use the sound that the duo had popularized. Loose Ends were, in fact, huge fans of Jimmy and Terry's work. Nevertheless, when Loose Ends later reached out to them wanting to work together, they, not surprisingly, said no. Then, to add insult to injury, a song that Loose Ends was hoping Jimmy and Terry would give to them was given to their label mates, British pop group The Human League. That song was the 1986 number one hit, Human. Two other singles off the album, Magic Touch and a cover version of David Bowie's Golden Years, didn't do as well as Hanging on a String, but they did place on the UK singles chart. Loose Ends would continue to experience great success, in the US especially, over the next few years. Their third album, Zagora, released in May 1986, produced another number one hit for the group on the US R&B chart called Slow Down. Two years after that, the track Watching You, off their fourth album titled The Real Chuckaboo, just missed the top spot, peaking at number two again on the US R&B chart. The behind the scenes recording experience on this particular album was a little different than on previous projects. At the time, Jane was having some issues with her voice and didn't want to sing. She also claimed that her vocal teacher told her to rest her voice. Of course, that posed a major problem in the studio and Steve and Carl became fed up. The work had to get done, so another vocalist was brought in. British soul group Soul to Soul's lead singer, Karen Wheeler. She can be heard on the lead single of the album, Mr. Bachelor. Perhaps that experience was warming up the members for what was about to come, since the following year, Loose Ends would go from three members down to one. 
Steve and Jane left the band in 1989. The reason why depends on which story you choose to believe. The most popular version that circulated was the proverbial creative differences explanation. However, Carl spoke about what he calls the real reason for the group's split in a 2015 interview with NTR Network. He revealed that Steve was more focused on his production work and Jane had a solo deal on the table in the US. She also felt, according to Carl, that him and Steve were trying to take over the production of the band, which had always belonged to American record producer Nick Martinelli. Jane considered Nick the fourth member of the group and the main ingredient to their success. That didn't sit well with her and began to cause a rift among the trio. In addition, a couple of years later, Carl went into further detail about the mindset of each member in a 2017 interview with Red Bull Music Academy. It gave a little more insight into why things ended up the way they did. In Carl's opinion, Steve and Jane lost focus. They got comfortable with their success and preferred to enjoy the money, homes, and cars instead of doing what Carl thought they should be doing, which was focus on the music and the future of the group. In that same interview, Carl also touched on the interesting fact that Loose Ends garnered so much more success in the U.S then their homeland. He touched on how eye-opening it was to go from not getting any airplay in England to having a number one hit in America. He attributed the disparity to the simple fact that they were essentially doing American music, not English music. In the early 80s, when the band came together, there really wasn't a UK soul scene. Even though radio was king at that time, you'd be hard-pressed to hear any black UK artists being played. There was a very limited amount of time slots, and when a song did get played, it was always an American artist. Loose Ends ended up taking elements from various genres, such as reggae, soul, R&B, and dance, to carve out a new niche for themselves. In 2019, Steve did an interview with Groovadelica Podcast, where he touched on their very hectic and tiresome work schedule. For many years on end, the band spent every waking moment either in the studio performing, or on tour. They even released albums back to back. It no doubt took its toll mentally and physically. Steve and Jane were ultimately replaced by singer-songwriters Linda Carrier and Sine Sulman. Both new members made their debut on Loose End's fifth album, Look How Long. It would turn out to be the band's final studio album. It featured what would be their last successful single, Don't Be a Fool, a top 20 hit in the UK and a top 10 hit in the US. Carl then went on to write and produce for various other artists, including Karen Wheeler, Five Star, Phyllis Hyman, D'Angelo, and Angie Stone. After their departure from the group, both Steve and Jane, separately, moved on with their solo careers. Jane moved across the pond to Los Angeles and continued performing in the US using the name Loose Ends. She wouldn't be able to do that forever, though. According to Loose End's official website, Carl is now the legal owner of the brand name, copyright, and trademark throughout the US, Asia, UK, and Europe. It also states that anyone found using the name illegally would be dealt with legally. In 2021, Carl announced that Loose Ends with band members Linda Carrier and Christine Levin were back. They had signed a new record deal and are currently working on a new album. In late 2021, Loose Ends began their Quiet Storm tour and already have confirmed dates scheduled in the new year. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.